She was this gun-toting, whiskey-drinking broad. The super epic fucking broad. She was a pioneer in the industry. She's also so famous and so controversial. So controversial. So she's kind of a big fucking deal. Her story is so incredible. She belongs on this podcast because she's a broad you should know. Hello and welcome to Broads You Should Know, the podcast about amazing and noteworthy women from history. I am your host, Sarah Gorski, and I am here today with Amelia Hamill. Hi, everybody. Hi, Amelia. Hi. I'm so Hi. glad to see your face again. I know. We're, we're the dynamic duo of, of uh, Broads You Should Know. Yeah, I really feel like, I'm really feeling the camaraderie. It's Absolutely. really nice. Well, and I think that you and I are also... Um, nerds in very similar ways you know we're both big readers we're both we're nerds we're raging feminists we're raging feminists the whole package. Um, you know we believe in human rights crazy crazy I, <laughs> jinx jinx exactly uh i owe you a coke apparently oh <laughs> but yeah no the things that we've had to talk about on you know even just you and me when we talk uh, I love it. Regular times. Yeah, we talk like, a lot off the mic too. Like audience, if you think we talk a lot on the mic, <laughs> <laughs> wait till the camera turns off. Exactly. Um, yeah. But today you all brought it abroad today. Yes. And I actually don't think I know friggin' anything about this broad, which makes me extra excited to learn. Who did you bring today? So today I brought Mary Baker Eddy. Now, if you've heard this name before, that's awesome, but you may not know very much about her. I so feel like I I've will... heard the name, but I just, I'm like, is she an inventor or is she a civil rights activist or is she a, a writer? She actually invented the, uh, or, or founded, I don't want to say invented, founded the religion of Christian science. No and shit. That is the religion I was raised in as a kid. And I just want to be really clear. I didn't bring her here today to try and convert anyone. You'll never get me to say anything bad about Christian science, but I yeah. actually am no longer a practicing Christian scientist. Well, you know what? I feel like, you know, I'm, I like to be a know-it-all about everything. I don't know anything about Christian science, to be honest with you. So, so I, will, I am I, also fascinated. Yeah. So I'll give you like kind of the Cliff Notes version. All right. Okay. Uh, and great. then we'll go more in depth <laughs> with her. But I think that, you know, not just because I was raised in the religion and in my family, the women were always the strong, amazing women. Mm -hmm. I was brought up by amazing women, um, especially in my mother's side, which was the side of my family that was that was Christian scientists. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, the fact that this religion was founded by a woman, a very, you know, ballsy woman at that for especially the time that she was around and the time that she actually formed this. You know, it was just always kind of a piece of pride for me, especially as a little kid in a religion that most people didn't understand, um, to be like, I don't well, feel like Mary Baker Eddy's amazing, so whatever. <laughs> I don't feel like any religions, other religions I've heard of were started by women. I mean, that I'm I know sure of. that they're out there. Um, but they're usually they're usually founded by men, let's be real. I mean, yeah, I mean like L. Ron Hubbard and like um yeah, L. Ron Hubbard or uh, Mormonism, like, Joseph John what, Smith, Joe Smith. Yeah, Joseph Smith. Joseph, the magic underwear man. Mormon. No, I think it was John Smith or something. I don't know. Anyway. Yikes. Um, so, anyway, so uh, but Christian science in a nutshell is uh the word science means the study of. So literally the name of the religion is, you know, the study of Christianity and of mm. of, of Christ. Uh, and the main thing that people usually know about the religion without really looking into it is that Christian scientists don't go to doctors. They don't rely on Western medicine or medicine huh. at, all, at all. They rely on prayer and mind about, above matter. Like refuse to go to the hospital type stuff? Like uh, Some of them. Some of them are like that. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's varying degrees of people, but the... Once we go through her background a little bit, you'll start to see why this was the direction that she went. Yeah. Now, I think she, the only thing I know about you guys, you guys, the only thing I know about Christian science is how many um, reading rooms, like Christian yes. science reading rooms there are. I feel like I see those around a lot of places. Yeah. So every church is required to actually have one. That's actually part of the thing. Every church is, has to have a, a reading room. Um, and then uh, once a year, they have to have a lecture of some sorts for the community. 
Huh. Um, and then there's also the Christian Science Monitor, which is still a Magazine. very well-respected newspaper. And, newspaper. and was, reading rooms are basically bookstores or libraries? Yeah, yeah. They're kind of like bookstores, but you can also borrow books from them and stuff. It depends. Well, that's nice. But Are they like only Christian books, though? Like, is it it's just, just only, stuff that's yeah, like published most, internally? Only Christian Science books, yeah. But, okay, that makes sense. But, okay. that w- but that's where you would go to learn about anything or to do some studying or anything like that. And I mean, I have... I can't imagine that anyone who works in a Christian science um, reading room would not just, you know, be happy to explain things to you if you ever want to. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be some cute little lady who's like, you come on in, I'm going to show you the kids' books, you know. I feel like more um, than once I was like, is that a bookstore? Should I go in? Because I like love bookstores and I'm obsessed with bookstores. And then I'm like, I have a feeling that's not the kind of bookstore I, th- <laughs> I want it to be. It's not woo-woo in any, in any way, but they are they are primarily books on Christian science. So, Okay, um, I'll stop interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, and like I said at the tip top, even though I'm no longer a practicing Christian scientist, you're never going to find me talking ill of that religion. I, I'm really, really grateful for my upbringing. And yeah, all fair. This. That's a fair yes. thing to say. Absolutely. So, um, so Mary Baker, Eddie, um, Mary Baker, uh, when she was born, uh, in 1821, 1821. Woo. So she was an American. She was born in, sorry, my notes got jumbled, um, in New Hampshire. Hmm. Okay. She ha- she was sick for a good part of her childhood. She was the youngest of six children, oh. um, and she did spend quite a bit of time. Um, now, what I didn't realize until I was actually doing the research for talking with you today was that she was not the only one who was questioning uh, Christianity in general. Apparently, this was kind of a trend at the time in the hmm. United States of people being like, yeah, the puritanical thing, I don't know so much, you know what I mean? And they started questioning religion and started really trying to decide like what they want the future to be huh. and, and, and how they wanted to study Christianity. And she was very devout, but she was unhappy with most of the Protestant churches that hmm. she was coming across. And, you know, she, really took it upon herself to learn and to teach and to really study, which is where she got the the study up. She was really turning it into a science of trying to figure this whole Christianity thing out. Um, And the one thing, and I'm going to say it the way that my mom used to say it when I was a kid, was that she read it and said, well, Jesus never went to the doctor. Jesus never, you know, did all of these things. So why do we? And so she really mm. came up with this theory that sickness was all in your head hmm. and that anything going on with you could be cured if you just figured out what the internal turmoil was and got in a good space with God through prayer. Okay. Like not exactly science, but okay. Yeah, no, I know. And that's what I'm saying. The word science technically means the study of. So that's really all that that is. So she was really wow. devout in studying Christianity and Jesus and all of those things. Mm -hmm. Now, because this was a religion that was founded in the United States, one cool thing that not a lot of people know is that we actually go to church on Thanksgiving, but not on Christmas. Interesting. She liked the idea. She was like, everybody goes to church on Christmas. So mm-hmm. like, we don't need to do that. We, we, we love Jesus all the time, but I do like this idea of this, this holiday where it's about being thankful and being, you know, mm-hmm. for what you have and what so you've So she kind of just picked, she kind of picked the holiday she liked. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just always, you know, I mean, I, it was one of those things as a kid, I remember thinking it was weird that we went to church on Thanksgiving, but I was like, I liked going to church. It was fun, you know. Did you have like a church turkey dinner and stuff? Like, did you do the thing? No, no. We would just go to a regular service in the morning, and then we'd go home and have Thanksgiving. So it yeah. wasn't like anything special. It just happened to come on Thursday once. Well, year. all holidays are kind of borrowed anyway. Like we know Absolutely. this from all of our previous episodes of like you know, exactly. Easter is a combination of X Y Z, and Christmas yeah. is a combination of X Y Z. You know, half of which are from 
not Christianity. No, <laughs> like they rolled in all pagan these and <laughs> pagan holidays. Yeah, because when the Roman Empire conquered everybody, they were like, you know, it's easier to just roll things together than to try to convince people their ideas are wrong. And so they just kind of... Exactly, exactly. But she was a really fascinating person um, mm. because she really had a lot of stuff happen in her life that could have broken someone down and she just never let it. Okay. Um, if that, so when she was uh, 20 years old, I believe. Yes. Uh, when she was 20 years old, she got married and her husband died six months into their marriage. What? What happened? Um, uh, and it was right. Let's see. I'm assuming let's... he was also kind of young. Yeah. He was not actually. I think he was older. You know, that seems to be the thing. Oh, recently it doesn't say how he died here, and I don't honestly remember. That's oh, right. Mary Baker married a promising young building contractor, George contractor. Washington Glover, and then she mm-hmm. moved with him to the Carolinas, and he died like six months later. She was oh six months pregnant at the time with their child George. Can you imagine? Um, oh my gosh. Especially in those days. Six months married, pregnant, and like all of a sudden. You're like 20 something. It must have been a crazy accident or something something crazy. Yeah, I'm assuming. I mean, although in those days you never know. Yeah. Um, And then uh, she she continued to have health struggles throughout her entire life. One of the more um, devastating ones was that when she was living in Boston, she actually slipped and broke her hip. And in those days, that was a death sentence. Kind of. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was just really nothing she could do. And so she turned to the Bible and and her work and her study on those things. And she said that she got a complete healing. Um, But the main thing that she would always focus on was looking at what's behind whatever is going on. Not the slip, obviously. You know what I mean? But just this idea that you could actually put your brain to work and your faith in God to hmm. heal yourself in a similar way to the way that Jesus did in the books of the Bible. And she stuck hmm. to that throughout her, you know, she doesn't end up publishing science and health with key to the scriptures until 1875. So it was quite a bit into her life. She was like she 50, died. right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, she had had a horrible, she was married three times. Oh, her husband obviously died. She was married to her second husband for like 20 years. And then they actually ended up getting a divorce. Oh. And then she married her third husband who died. Oh my um, gosh. And her son was actually taken away from her by family. They told him at the age of 12 that she had died. And they sent him to Minnesota. Why? And she and George didn't see each other again for 20 more years. Why did they take him away? Were they, was he being there neglected was or something? There's anything clear about why they did it other than the fact that they just didn't think she could take care of him. And so her exes or her, her former husband's family kind of took over his care and then shipped him off to Minnesota claiming it was best for him. And they kept them apart. They, they sh- When he was 12, they shipped him off and they didn't see each other until he was in his 30s. Oh my gosh, that is insane to me. So she had like a really kind of a tragic life, but it was also very much surrounded by like really cool, great people. And once again, I'm not trying to convert anybody. You don't have to believe in any of this. That's fine. I just always found her to be this really inspirational woman because no matter how many times someone threw something at her, whether it be the death of a husband or, you know, not getting to see her child for 20 years or whatever, she always handled it and handled it with grace and she lived to be 89 years old so she didn't publish till she was 50 but at that point she had already been building like the organization right like she didn't actually start the church until after the book came out and it's called it's called science and health with key to the scriptures and basically it's a companion to the bible and she'd worked on it for a very long time and so if you go to a christian science church during a service what they will actually do is they'll have two readers. One will read excerpts from the Bible and then the other one will read the, the excerpts from science and health that actually go with that section of the Bible. And it mm. will talk about, and it's basically her just getting through the bullshit in the Bible, mm. a lot of the sexist stuff, all of those things. But I think my favorite thing. What sexist is, stuff in the Bible. What are you talking I know, about? I, you know what, you're right. <laughs> There's nothing sexist about the Bible at all. 
Uh, um, anyway. But uh, one of my favorite things is every single Christian science church has to have the words God is love above the podium. Mm. They don't have clergy in the way that other churches do. You actually have elected what they call readers. Mm. And they will read and follow, you know, the the lesson plans that are set aside for each week. But, they, you know, and then they'll a lot of times uh, the, the first reader will come up with excerpts of their own that they will read to the congregation. But we never had clergy in the way that other ones. There's no priest. There's no pastor. They're all elected officials with, from within the church. And so mm. I grew up in this really great church where everybody really knew each other and everybody loved each other. My, my dance teacher was also my, my, Christ, uh, my Sunday school teacher, you know, things mm. like that. And so it was a really great little community. Um, and no, you know, nobody in my family or in my little church that I grew up in were weird if somebody chose to go to the doctor or to take medicine for something. Like it you weren't like kicked of, out. Yeah. Like we were not judgmental. Now I'm not saying that there probably aren't people who take it to more of an extreme. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine. Every religion has extremes. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it was basically, so in Christian science, if you need help getting through something, you actually call a person called a practitioner. My grandfather was a practitioner um, mm. and um, and they'll pray with you and they'll help you and they'll guide you. And then you work together to see like what's going on. And sure enough, when I was a kid, especially, and I think that that's why I loved growing up with this so much when I was like, oh, mommy, my tummy hurts or whatever. She would always sit me down and be like, okay, so what's going on at school? Because nine times out of 10, it mm. was because some kid was being mean to me. Oh, or somebody to you? Me. I I'll know. beat him up. Who is I that know. kid? I know. Can you believe that? I'm just kidding. Um, I don't um, condone beating up. Um, no, kids. little kids. I know, me either. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It was like, oh, my teacher's being mean to me. And then she'd be like, are they really being mean? Or are they just making you do your homework? And I'd be like, well, that's mean. And she's like, no. Um, but it's Interesting. really cool. And I, and I very much brought that into my adult life. I really do. You know, when things start kind of falling apart, I kind of look and I'm like, so what's going on? Huh. It's me mentally that is bringing yeah. me to this place of actually having physical, you know. I mean, it is all connected. I mean, I totally believe like Absolutely. bodies I, I and do. minds. And there's a yeah. lot of studies about that really actually about like the, the mind-body connection. Do, do yeah. I think that there's like a magic wand that will cure everyone? Of course not. But I think that if we spent more time looking at the causes behind sometimes things, you know what I mean? Like I wish yeah. that they could do that maybe more even in like doctor's offices and things because I think that the truth is that she did stumble onto something. And that is the idea that your emotional uh, problems or whatever do a lot of times manifest themselves physically. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's a very, and I could be wrong. So feel free to tell me I'm wrong or audience, you know, you know what to do audience. Uh, but I, I do like, it's a very kind of like uh, Eastern medicine type of philosophy and Western medicine is just like so vastly different it's like here's a pill fix your stuff so like and i like, said yeah like i said the, at the time it was becoming really in vogue to question your religion and to really kind of look at it and what she wanted to create was a non-orthodox but also a non-super liberal like something in the middle like a compromise yeah. because homeop homeopathy i never say it right um yeah was, was very much in vogue at the time which is like you know have some elderberries and some whatever. <laughs> like, some know. ginger tea and some, all of which actually taste really good and really do yeah. help you. <laughs> I mean, they calm me down. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it was just the idea of not living for the physical, but really for your emotional and your spiritual well-being. Yeah, that makes sense. And so she was, she was really fascinating though. She was married three times. She, um, I believe it was her third husband. I'd have to double check. Uh, when he passed away, she um, she gave freedom to all the slaves that that he had had. Oh, um, and and that was really kind of unheard of at that time to just you know she always thought it was wrong and she but she didn't have was she still in Carolina at the time was she, was that, she that moved all over the mother church what they call it um, is actually in Boston she spent a lot Boston. of time in Boston 
Um, but she was, she, you know, she kind of bounced around all over the place and then having, you know, multiple husbands, yeah. she kind of had to go where they went. So she was a she- kind of an abolitionist before that was absolutely popular. Absolutely. And she just, you know, she had this group, um, they weren't disciples. I hate it when people call them her disciples, but just this group and they all studied together. And in her later years, they all just kind of lived together and studied together and like the whole thing. So um, how did she build the church? Did she, so did, did she kind of go to new communities and bring her thoughts and just like recruit or like, how does that happen? More, I think it was more that she started the church and then the people in the church really started making it bigger. She founded the Christian Science Monitor and she actually wrote multiple versions of Science and Health with key to the scriptures huh. because, um, and then kept re every time she like had an epiphany and added something or whatever, she would, she would, uh, publish it again. So there are actually lots and lots of, um, several versions of the book wow. as she kind of grow and grew older. And she lived to be 89 with, you know, her, they, I don't want to call them followers. She was not a cult leader by any way. You know, she was just a woman yeah. who really, truly believed in God and Jesus and yeah. all of those things. You'd say like her, with her congregation, with her flock. With yeah. Her, so her mother. little group of people that wanted to study with her and things like that. Um, and they so. grew to be, it's a pretty big, I mean, I feel like I've seen locations in lots of places. Like it's not a yeah, very well, small place. religion. It's worldwide. I mean, yeah. Um, I remember when I went to uh, London the first time I went to a Christian science church there on Sunday because I was like why not I'm in England <laughs> so it's spread all the way overseas absolutely it's 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 global oh. and you know uh, I I once again I get a little bit crazy because in my life you know if I had really said take me to the doctor my mom would have taken me to the doctor you know what I mean or if she had really felt she wouldn't if have your eyeballs me. were bleeding and shit, exactly. she would like, go if save your eyeball and through my skull she would have taken me to a doctor you know yeah like, but for little tiny stomach aches that, you know, seven-year-olds get because they don't want to take their spelling test, it was like the perfect way to grow up. Because my mom was, would be like, is it just because you didn't study for your spelling test? And eventually it'd be like, yeah, that's probably why. Is it spelling? Is that your bad one? You hate spelling? Oh, yeah. No. And I am I 100% have a theory as to that. And that's because there was always a spelling test on my birthday. And I would just, I was like, but it's my birthday. I shouldn't have to spell on my birthday. I I'm have sorry. um I have like an aversion to math. Oh yeah. A lot of people do. It's because I had a teacher in like third or fourth grade. I can't one of the elementary school grades who like made fun of me at the whiteboard or at the <gasps> chalkboard when I got things wrong. No. And so ever since then I was always like, I don't really know. I'm not good at math. I'm not and I'm like, I think I'm fine at math. Like I use my calculator a lot because Well, because we know, have them in I our do. phones. I mean but like it's, sometimes it's the little stuff. It's the little stuff when we get picked on. Spelling tests on your birthday every year. Every year. Because so my birthday, my birthday's January seventh. So everybody's broke from Christmas. Wait, are you serious? Yeah. That's my birthday. Shut the front door. January seventh. Are you kidding me right now? I have not. My birthday is January seventh. Mind blowing. That is mind blowing. I cannot believe we have not realized this yet. <laughs> we have the same birthday. Now I know why you and I became soulmates immediately. I am, uh, Jeff. Because no one knows how hard it is to be a Capricorn except for other exactly. Capricorns. For other Capricorns. I know. But yeah, so everybody's always, you know, they're still hungover from New Year's. They're all broke from Christmas. So my birthday is, and then it was always like the first day we had to go back after Christmas break. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or at least yeah. that first week. And so well, it's I a loop in. You know, everybody who's born between like December 19th and January 10th is like, oh, you're just a holiday birthday. We're too busy Yeah, and they just you. like shove it all together. And luckily my dad had a lot of sympathy for me because his birthday is right by Thanksgiving. And yeah. so every couple of years, his birthday is actually on Thanksgiving. And you get the like Chris birthday gift. You're like, exactly. Hey, exactly. man. And then those exactly. people with July birthdays are like, look at all the gifts I get all year. Not that life's about gifts, like, but you know, no, but when you're a kid, when you're a kid, that's some oh, yeah, rough when shit. you're a kid, it's it's all about you know. But I also just thought like this is my special day. I shouldn't have to do anything I don't want to today. Well, and so you should have been allowed to call in sick. <laughs> I know. Unfortunately, my mom was uh, just as big a nerd as me, and she was like, "You're going to school." <laughs> like, if I wasn't allowed to do it's really just about the 
this I wasn't allowed to call in either. I had to go to school. Yeah, I had to go to school. But that oh, is wow. hilarious. I cannot believe we have the same birthday and we are just figuring this out right now. What would Mary think about that? I mean, divine intervention, obviously. <laughs> God, God wants us to be together. But um, oh, no, I think I, I would God. encourage people to learn more about Christian science, you know, if it so moves them, just because it's it's one of the more misunderstood ones. There's yeah. a huge difference between Christian science and like the people who claim that if you let poisonous snakes bite you, that you're like, oh, yeah, I didn't think that's what you they know were. what I mean. But but, but it, it definitely it, sounds like of all the like more modern, more modern meaning like. You yeah, know, only a couple hundred years old religion. I feel like it sounds like a lot. S- not, I don't mean softer in a bad way, but like it sounds like like fairly harmless. Like people don't get hurt. Well, yeah, and, and, like. and I think that the things that were cool, at least you know, for me, like we didn't believe in hell. There's no such thing as hell. My mom would always tell me, you know, when Jesus talked about hell, he really meant the dump. That if you don't clean up your life and live right, you're going to have to go eat food out of the dump because that's the only place you're going to be able to get it. Things like yeah. that, that were like, you know, whereas other religions believe in like the devil, yeah. and whatever. And there's like weird parallels between some of the stuff you've been saying and like what I understand about like Jehovah Witnesses and like, there's but some like some all interesting kind of similarities. Religions also at the same time when all of these people were questioning the same things, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, I don't know Jehovah's Witness stuff particularly well. Um, but I know that, you know, Christian science is vastly different than like Catholicism and, oh, yeah. and Baptist and, you know, those kind yeah. of things. But the main thing that I would say that really drove it home for me as a kid was just this emphasis on the idea that God is love and God loves mm. us and wants us to succeed. It's not the brimstone. The it's not the fire brimstone. Yeah. Exactly. Instead of the idea of this God that's like, oh, you said a bad word. <laughs> You know. Yeah. You know what's so interesting, Amelia? And like, hopefully I'm not like stepping out of bounds to like say this, but it's so interesting to to know how many of those other religions that are more fire and brimstone, like they are so heavily tied to patriarchy, right? Oh, absolutely. And controlling women and, and not, and you know, gen- yeah. anyone that's like not, you know, cisgender, like it, it's like... And then you have this religion created by a woman that's well, like, now nah, very... we don't need the fire and brimstone and like yeah. how much more peaceful and like loving that whole, that's very interesting. Yeah. And she really did. It was very much just rooted in the idea that God was love. God wanted us to, you know, and that God had given us all the tools that we needed to heal ourselves. We just needed to, you know, get to yeah. that right headspace yeah that's so interesting wow thank you for bringing that today mary baker eddy yeah so she's definitely you know worth looking up her her life is fascinating and and you know if you ever see a a christian scientist just smile and say hi because i'm sure that they're lovely lovely people do they wear like a particular name tag like well, I recognize no, them saying, on the like, street. If you just happen upon a you know Christian Science reading room, and you want to like pop in. They're not going to be weird with you, even if you're just browsing. They're just gonna do you all know each know? other? Like if I pop my head in and I'm like, "Hey, by the way, <laughs> Amelia wanted me to say hi." Will they be like, "Oh yeah, we love Amelia"? <laughs> I feel like when my grandmother, like, you know, was like a young adult, maybe it was a little bit more like that in your city, perhaps, you know what I mean? Like you all kind of knew each other. Like she was living in um, San Diego and Los Angeles at the time. I feel like a little bit like one of her boyfriends along the way had said that it should be, it shouldn't be a cross. It should be a knife and a fork because after church was a big deal for us to always go out to lunch. And like mm. just spend time together, and so that was his big thing. And that sounds tasty. We carried it on for a pretty long time, you know. So wow, yeah. So yeah. I just thought she'd be an interesting person to bring up and to let people think about it. But I would say that it's one of the more misunderstood. Like a lot of people when I was growing up thought we were Scientologists, and there's no, no religion on the planet I think that's more vastly different from Scientology. Than no, no, I did, no, no. And there's a there's like a that wasn't even in my mind that they are close to. There's like similarities to how I feel like their original origin ish, but like their thoughts and like what they do and how they behave. No, like, yeah. Well, oh and my it was, god, no. Yeah, no, that was you know completely different. But people always thought because they had similar names that maybe that they were connected and they were not in the least. Well, you know, we live in an age where critical thinking is uh, on the decline, <laughs> especially with the internet. 
people think they don't have to learn anymore. Critical thinking is um, like a like a skill set now that's like waning. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. I am. Um, I sometimes hear things from people that don't have good critical thinking skills, and I'm like, I know. I know. Oh my gosh. Um, I should just, I just want to say it on the podcast because he doesn't listen to this podcast, but I have a neighbor, this, this little boy. He's a, he's not, I mean, he's a man obviously, but he's a little boy and he's like, I'm just going to run the marathon with no training. And I was like, I don't think it's a good idea. Maybe don't do it. And he was like, I'm doing it. And I was like, and then the next day he's like, I finished, I finished. And I was like, okay. And then the next day he's like, I can't walk. What do I do? And I was like, I literally told you. I'm like critical thinking. It's not there. It's not no, there. I, I have a good friend who runs the LA marathon all the time. He actually runs marathons all over the country. Yeah. For, My ex-boyfriend uh, ran, ran a bunch for, of marathons. A and, he, and he has to. He's train, a runner like, and he trains constantly. Day. Constantly trains- training. Yeah. yeah. So. And the reason is so that you, you know, can walk and don't die at the end of your like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I just can't. I just can't, Amelia. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show again. My thank birthday you. twin. Um, my birthday twin. I can't even fucking believe that. I know. Insane. It's, thank it's you for being here, Amelia. Mary Baker Eddy is like, what a what what a woman to like create her own like her and own to religion. follow her own and not let people tell her that because she was chronically ill that that was just the end of it. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. took a lot of chutzpah. Chutzpah. That is the word I was actually thinking of birthday twin yeah you're right it took a lot of chutzpah a lot of, a lot of the broads we talk about on this podcast had a lot of chutzpah i feel yeah. like yeah i'm not really jewish i shouldn't probably use jewish words but i think we all know what that as means as long as right? we're using them correctly and it's not derogatory it's a I lot of balls it. it's like the equivalent and, of a lot of balls right well i my new thing is to, to grow some ovaries oh. i don't tell people to grow balls i tell them to grow ovaries Grow some yeah, I mean, you can't really grow body parts anyway. I know, but you know what I mean? Like, I want to stop pretending that 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 means something. That's true. You know? Okay, I can get behind that. I can I can support that. Yeah. See? Yeah. Well, she All was right. great. Thank you for bringing her. Thank you for being here. Another amazing week, Amelia. And we will see you next week. To learn more about Mary Baker Eddy, see pictures of her and quotes from this episode, head on over to broadsyoushouldknow.com. While you're there, you can click on over to the About page and read more about Amelia and me. Our bios, photos, links to all of our cool stuff, all right there. Are you following Broads You Should Know on social? We are on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube at Broads You Should Know and Twitter at BYSK Podcast. Like, subscribe, comment. That helps new listeners to find us. You know what also helps new listeners to find us? When you share your favorite episode with your friends or family or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. To suggest a broad, fill out the form on our website or email us at broadsyoushouldknow.com. Broads You Should Know is produced by me, Sarah Gorski, and edited by Chloe Skye with original music by Darren Callahan. Finally, if you really enjoyed the story of Mary Baker Eddy, then you might be interested in a few other broads we've covered in the past, particularly our religious broads who made big movements in religion. That includes Mother Teresa, St. Catherine of Siena, and St. Teresa of Avila. See you next week for another Broad You Should Know. Mm